What's going on guys, Don over at REI Automation and Beast Mode CRM. And we've got a couple questions over the last week or so regarding uh, different items showing up on a Google Calendar, syncing it uh, to Google Calendar, what that looks like, what can uh, be, be done there, sync there. Um, so I wanted to talk over that by creating a test workspace, uh, two different types of apps and a couple different uh, task as well as items uh, that have dates uh, that show up on the calendar. So a couple things to take note here. Um, you've got a workspace that I'm in right now with one app that's just a regular type app, one that is a contact styled app. I'll show both of those what that looks like. You've got your task that are showing up here, uh, which normally show up on your activity screen on any workspace you're in inside of Podio inside of Beast Mode. And then you have your uh, calendar items uh, right here. So first thing I'll talk about is how can you connect uh, Google Calendar and sync it or connect it. Uh, two different ways. You can either sync it by clicking here, and I'll talk on that in a second, or up here. If you're trying to sync just this workspace specifically, you'll be clicking here and then taking the next steps. If you're trying to connect every single workspace you have inside of Podio, meaning workspaces that show up over here, um, you'll want to go up to the blue area up here and that will sync all the workspaces in general uh, to your Gmail calendar. So uh, we'll talk over that here in a second. Uh, by clicking on this, this takes you to your Podio workspace calendar, specifically this workspace's calendar. So you can see I've got some test items on here that I've uh, created and put in here. If you wanted to sync a Gmail calendar, you'd click the wrench, export, and then you can go to iCal or Gmail, Google, and they do have other like Office 360, things like that. And then you can connect to whatever you're gonna to connect to and make that import happen to push these items to your calendar. Now you'll notice that we've got uh, one item from the contacts or the appointments app. You see by the icon it's matching. Here we've got the contacts app item matching. So each item has something showing up uh, with a date field item, and I'll show you what those look like. And then you have your task. So your tasks are showing up as blue here. Um, if you connect your calendar, this stuff would all push to your Gmail calendar, and it looked something like this. So you can see the items are here, but note that they're all the same color, so they're not differentiated between task and or item uh, set. This is going to be um, if you have a contact styled app and it has date, time, and map field. You can see all that showed up. This one uh, is just a regular styled app. You notice that the um, uh, map field did not show up and you've got um, these items created. Now, if I click on them or double click on them, uh, neither one has a notification set, so it's not gonna push or uh, notify, if you will. Um, neither does this one. And so the only difference is this one has a location on it. Um, so we can talk about that in a second. You can kind of see there, um, depending on what you're trying to do, that might work for you. Uh, and then the tasks are here. And again, they have no notifications, uh, but they are pushed to your calendar. So if you're looking at your calendar on a daily basis and then determining how you're gonna run things by kind of having your calendar open, this may suffice for what you're trying to do. But if you're expecting a pop-up or a notification to pop up on your mobile phone or anything like that, this is not going to be your answer in my opinion. Um, and we'll talk more of what may be a better answer. Um, but we've got our workspace calendar up here. You can sort it out by day, week, month. Um, as I mentioned, you can come up here and uh, go to the main Podio calendar and have all of your workspaces uh, that you see over here when it drops down uh, synced up. And again, once you clicked on that calendar, you can come here. Now notice that this one has a little bit more options as to what can and cannot be synced um, into your calendar. So you've got some check boxes, some radial buttons, and then you can click export to calendar, iCal, Google, or as I mentioned, Office Exchange and some of those others that are an available option. And then you can export to your calendar there. So take that into account. All right, let's talk over the different apps that I showed you. So this is a regular styled app. Um, if you clicked here and create your own app, um, it's the standard app right here, this first one. The second one's going to be an event style app. And you'll be able to see the differences between, between those two. This one has just got some information in it got a date field and if you are an admin you can click modify and under any date field it has the option to show on the calendar if you uncheck this it will not show on the workspace calendar the podio calendar and if you got it synced it would not show on your uh, gmail calendar if this is unchecked so take that into account um, but as it is right now this one is showing on the calendar it is set up to show on the calendar and we verified that by looking 
at the 9 a.m. Uh, item that's in here. So right here and here, we've got these. There's some uh, time differences between the two accounts. That's what you're seeing there. All right, let's go back uh, into it. You'll notice that I've got task set in here. Now you see one of them is past due, uh, and it had the alarm clock that I'll show you in a second as a pop-up reminder, and we'll talk about that here in a second. And then you have two here that are not yet due. If you have your account set up under uh, the user bubble to send a notification or email about task, this could potentially send you an email each time you have a task that's due and when it's due or prior to it being due, it's going to send you a notification via email that you have something coming up and it's coming due. Um, so tasks do that. These date fields do not. So that's an important thing to take into account. All right. Um, OK, so this is where I'm showing you under your bubble, under email notifications, if you come under your user and you see account settings. Once you move over to emails and notifications, you can have it send emails when you're given a task at mentioned, and then some of the stuff will show up um, and or email based on your settings that you have. So if you have it towards setting emails and you have a task due, you can see that I, this is what it looks like when it sends an email about a task coming due. Um, so that is something that it can do. Uh, but again, this is just task, not the date fields regarding your uh, calendar items or appointments that are set. If you're inside of an item like this and you hit the T key, you can, uh, that's basically a hot key where you can set an item. If you uh, set a date that is in the future and a time that is in the future, uh, this remind me option becomes available and you can click remind me and now it's green or you can click it and stop. Um, but just note that whoever's clicking this, not, not who the uh, item is, is uh, assigned to. So, you know, if this is my admin, say, coming in here and setting a task for me and they click this reminder, it's not going to pop up and give me a reminder. It's whoever is clicking this, whatever user currently logged in is clicking this is going to get that reminder. Take that into account. Okay, so right now we're in the uh, regular uh, app that I showed you. Now we're going to go into the contact styled app just to kind of show you the difference of what those two look like. Uh, most of the beast mode apps are going to be the regular styled apps, the standard, not set up uh, like this. So you can see this one uh, makes it to where you can click attending, not attending. Now, if an appointment's set, um, I don't know that, you know, you want to know somebody's not attending. They should be attending if an appointment was set. Um, but that's the big difference as you see that right there. Uh, and then again, we've got this date field uh, that shows up and you can set the uh, reminder right there to where it could uh, send a notification. So, you know, you have the ability if you have a contact styled app uh, to send that reminder, that notification. Um, but for us and our personal use and what we've chosen to do on our side, um, we wanted to be able to have uh, notifications sent both to us and to the seller. Um, and for that reason alone, um, you know, you couldn't tell really what was going on here specifically and you had no pop up notification. Sure, you got an email, but nothing right here. No push notification, if you will. It was just an email. Uh, that was getting sent out. For those reasons alone, um, we chose to use a QD scheduler. Um, and if you have a larger team, 36 calendar, you know, you can connect all of your calendars through Gmail or whatever you're, you're using uh, to this right here. And it will send or can send, if you set it up, a text to you and the seller, and it can send an email uh, to them as well. So take that into account. Um, if you want uh, one of the smaller accounts and you have six calendars, you can still get the text messaging for $25 a month. Uh, this one, you can get the email, uh, but you're not going to get a text. So this is really where it's at if you want the text to go to you and the seller up to six calendars. Uh, and like any other calendar service, it's got a scheduling link that's used to schedule uh, appointments. Uh, what we did is basically got that scheduling link, and then we went back to the main activity screen uh, within the workspace. So you see here the main activity screen right here and came down to add a report tile. So I'm going to click off of this add tile and come down to link. And we said something like schedule appointment here, put in the URL from that scheduling service um, right there and, and the name right there, sorry, and then add it. And it'll be a clickable link that your admin or assistant that's setting appointments can click on. And then whatever available times you have on your calendar, they'd be able to schedule that calendar for the seller by getting their information, phone number, email address, things like that. Uh, and then it would remind them based off of the settings that you set up in Acuity Scheduler via text and email, as well as you can set it to send you a text and email as a reminder. 
uh, that was the best way to make sure everybody was on the same page uh, in our opinion and how we did things so if you're looking for a push notification style type thing that's how we've done it on our end um, you may choose to do a different way obviously if you're using the mobile app uh, through podio uh, you get some of those push notifications potentially through the mobile app and if you get questions concerns on that feel free to uh, post below the video uh, if other people have any input uh, on other ways that they've done this feel free to add your input as well um, but this is kind of how we did it and why we've done it in the past uh, just take note of kind of some of these uh, i guess things and how they push and, and what they do and do not push uh, depending on how you set things up all right guys look forward to talking to you uh, post whatever questions comments concerns you got and uh, we'll do another video shortly take care